prize win here. <laughs> oh, there'll be a hot time in the old town tonight. <laughs> So, gentlemen, that's how it is. Until Grissom uh, resurfaces. <laughs> I'm the acting president, and I say, starting with this anniversary festival, we run the city into the ground. <laughs> Why don't we hear this from Grissom? Yeah. And what's with that stupid grin? Life's been good to me. Everyone here has their hands on the table. This can reveal a lot of information about what a person is thinking or feeling. Hands flat on the table signifies that someone feels confident, and the distance the thumb is from the index finger can actually be used as a gauge to see how confident someone actually is. The further the thumb from the index finger, the greater confidence in the person. You can actually come across as confident by intentionally doing this when at a table. However, some of these people are exhibiting the hands clasped cue, which reveals that these people are holding themselves back from something, which could suggest that they want to speak. We fold our hands and interlock our fingers as a way to restrain ourselves from doing something. In this context, I would say that these people want to speak out at the right moment. However, the guy the Joker is about to kill has his hands in a fist, which signifies aggression. He is a threat to the Joker, which is why he ends up being killed. <laughs> what if we say no? Well, Tony, <laughs> nobody wants a war. <laughs> if we can't do business, why, we'll just shake hands and that'll be it. Yeah? The guy then stands up as a challenge to the Joker. Standing up is a sign of alertness, and in the given context shows that he's challenging the Joker's authority. When we rise to a stressor, we are exhibiting the fight response, and the stressor doesn't like that at all. This is the opposite of a distancing behavior, which is the body's way of putting distance between itself and a stressor. If people feel submissive, they will appear non-confrontational. However, if they feel dominant and rise to the stressor, they do just the opposite. Here. <laughs> oh, there'll be a hot time in the old town tonight. <laughs> so this guy takes his cigar out of his mouth. I would class this as a pacifying behavior under the bracket of fidgeting. A pacifying behavior, for those of you that don't know, is the brain's way of dealing with emotional stress. It's controlled by the limbic system, and when we receive significant emotional stress, like our partner being incinerated by a handshake, it causes us to exhibit pacifying behaviors. These include fidgeting, which is what this guy's doing, touching of the face, chest, exhaling, and many other cues. <laughs> <laughs> Antoine got a little hot under the collar. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of the healing power of laughter? As you can now see, a couple of the people have taken their hands off of the table. This is to be expected, and I would also expect to see more people doing this, as they would be experiencing emotional stress from the Joker's actions. <laughs> Joker keeps looking at his goons for appraisal of his joke, which shows that he actually thinks that they are funny. I think this highlights the total lunacy of Jack Nicholson's Joker. Uh, why don't you go down to the Globe, follow that reporter, Knox, take your camera, see what he knows about this Batman and Bob. I'm 
number one guy. Yes, sir. Bob and Joe can maintain strong eye contact with each other, which shows that they have mutual respect, and that Bob doesn't fear the Joker. Joker then puts two hands on Bob and holds him. This shows us something interesting. When we grab someone or make physical contact, it signifies that we want their full attention. Now Bob is clearly already focused on Joker, so for him to grab him still shows that the Joker sees him as very important. If anyone touches you in conversation, it shows that they want your full attention and that they potentially look up to you. <laughs> Your pals, uh, they're not bad people. Maybe we, uh, ought to give them a couple of days to think it over. No? Joker has his arms folded over his stomach here. This is what's known in body language as shielding. He is covering off his vital areas from attack, which shows that he wants to keep other people out. Even though this guy is dead, he still doesn't like him, and that's why he still exhibits a shielding behavior here. This highlights that the Joker really didn't like the fact that the guy challenged him. Grease him now. Yeah. Okay. You are a vicious bastard, retaliant. <laughs> I'm glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you did. <laughs> Joker's proxemics, which is the distance between people in communication, changes as he leans in. Now, this guy is dead, but Joker is acting as if he were alive. When we move closer to a stressor, or potential stressor, it shows that we feel more dominant than them, as we're willing to put ourselves closer to a potential danger. This is again the opposite of a distancing behavior. People when threatened lean back or step away in order to get away from the threat. Now, if you want to come across as dominant, get closer to the person you are talking to, but not too close as to come across as a threat. So overall, this scene is brilliant. Jack Nicholson is my favorite Joker simply because he's truly nuts. His body language is really difficult to analyze as he's just so unpredictable. But when he does exhibit nonverbal cues, they are always accurate and detailed. The rest of the characters also exhibit detailed nonverbal communication which makes the scene feel a lot more realistic. This is a great movie despite being a bit corny. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more content. And also check out my Patreon if you'd like to support the channel further. Thanks for watching.